My guest is the author of Buck Naked Faith. Plastic Jesus, Mystics, Mavericks, and Miracle Workers, you may know Eric Sandras as Dr. E. He has a PhD in human development and family relations, spent nearly a decade as a human sexuality instructor at various uh, universities and colleges. He's currently the recovery ministries and teaching pastor at Mountain Springs Church in Colorado. Dr. E teaches at Colorado Christian University and the University of Phoenix. His wife, Cindy, and one of their two children live in Colorado. You've got one off at university. I do. Eric? Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I'm that old already. I can't believe what you've been through since you were here last. Man, I, I'm just glad I made it back here. You... Oh, let, me, let me just set this up. Christmas Eve 2010, you arrived in Colorado, broke, frustrated, and disillusioned. The next month, you started writing When the Sky is Falling, Finding Faith and Hope in Life's Crises. You kind of capsulize the multiplicity of crises in this seemingly endless crucible in one chapter. We can't cover it all. But tell me, what was the dream job that you lost and the home that subsequently went to? Yeah, you know, sometimes in life, it's like one or two things happening you can handle. But other times there's like things just begin to unravel. Like you pull a thread and it all starts falling apart. So I was in my dream job in Southern California. I was a teaching pastor of a 4,000 member church, working with addicts and porn stars and gangbangers doing recovery ministries. And then when the economic recession hit, I got laid off of two jobs in three weeks. One is the pastor and I was also teaching part-time at a college of 12,000 students. And suddenly I felt like the door just opened up and everything just fell. And I'm, I'm just going to generalize here. Yeah. A couple of times you were offered something really wonderful and turned it down only to find in short order that the door closed where you were. And it's like, God, what kind of trick is that? Yeah. But you want yeah. to write unfair over the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, and sometimes life feels so unfair. Between losing jobs and that started unraveling then, I couldn't you know, keep up with my house payments. I lost my house, lost lost my retirement. I even had to sell my motorcycle and, and that was tough. And then, you know, I went through a couple part-time jobs and then I found out I had cancer. I went through a bout with cancer. Um, did three funerals of very close friends or relatives, including my father-in-law. It just, it just wouldn't stop. And I know sometimes in life we feel like it just starts piling up on us. So it ended up December 24th. A few years ago, we moved back to Colorado. I had to actually at the age of 45, moved back in with my parents, with my family. I was just homeless. I was broke. I, I just had nothing left. And thankfully, I had a home to go to with my parents. But, but nobody wants to be at that place in, in the middle of their life. But that's where I was. You say instead of emotionally crumbling, you remained divinely desperate. Yeah. That tells me that you dis didn't disengage God. You right. And that's the temptation. When... When things start getting really rough in our lives, a lot of times we just want to start blaming God. And it really came to a point, I was standing in my parents' kitchen one time, everybody was gone. And I was, I was crying, I was mad. And I said, God, after everything I've done for you, after all these years working with the poor and addicts and doing missions and church planting, this is what I get? Like, really? And I felt like the Holy Spirit just tapped me on the shoulder that morning and said, Eric, what if I asked you that same question? After all I've done for you, this is what I get? This attitude, this, this sense of entitlement? Have I not redeemed your life? Have I not set you free of your addictions? And, and I just realized I had to make a change. Like I can't change my circumstances, but I can change my choices. And I decided to become divinely desperate at that point and not just bitter. And it, it made a difference. I can't say I was perfect through it all, but but it made a difference because like there's a point in your life, God is all you have. You had three dependents yeah. taking this journey with you. Did they have the same faith? Well, I'll tell you, you know, and Did I'll they speak choose to, hope instead of fear? Yeah, my, my wife is amazing with the things that we have gone through and, and especially when she watches her husband go through a bout with cancer and um, you know, I was diagnosed and 10 days later I was in a, having a foot of my intestine removed so it wasn't like an easy process. But even for her, that divine desperation, even when none of it makes sense, you do realize I need a savior. And so we held on to that hope and to that dream. And you know, faith, faith is believing in something. 
And so sometimes fear is really faith in the worst possible outcome. Hope is faith in the best possible outcome. It takes a choice. We decided to try to hang in there and maintain faith in God's ultimate goodness, even when it didn't make sense. I love your quoting of Jesus' words. Uh, Jesus to Peter, Luke 2, 32. I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Mm. I was telling you, I have a, a section of books in my office, yeah. Christian leaders who lost their faith when the multiple trials mm. put them in that crucible. Now, the reason there's a book is that God met them there and did something so wonderful Absolutely. that they couldn't have gone forward without knowing him as they do now. Mm. What's the takeaway for you? Uh, you know, friends, I even tell you this. Every crisis has a beginning, a middle, and an end. They just always do. And it's the choices that we make at the beginning and the middle of a crisis will determine if we create a new one for us at the end of the current one. Ooh. And so I just encourage people, choose well. I mean, even the end of some crises are that it's over. I, I am blessed right now that I'm three years cancer free, but I have friends who are still dying of cancer. I get that. But even at the end of that, it's done. The crisis is over. So choose to finish well. Mm. And it makes a big difference. Yeah, we have Dr. Kevin Lehman here all weekend and he prays every day now, Lord, help me finish strong. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I wanna read this on page uh, 21. In light of all we've heard already in this hour, and I love your closings. Your time with the mystics has been significant in preparing you for this. I People think who really didn't has. live North American evangelical Christian lives. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because, you know, we tend to read from a North American evangelical side. You know, the, the Bible, we read it pretty soft, kind of God owes us a lot of blessings and things. But, but really, the Bible's full of pain and disillusionment and displacement and indebtedness. And, and through that, God takes care of his people. Believe this, and you have at the end, you've got to pray this, ponder this, believe this, every chapter. I refuse to believe I am alone in my crisis. Though my circumstances may be unique, my discontentment and disillusionment are not. There are others who have shared or are currently sharing my struggles. Some of them have overcome, some have not. Today, I will choose to try to overcome. I will not let my pain turn to isolation. Mm. That's where the enemy gets you good. Exactly. When you we get insulate and isolate. Yeah. You know what's unique about this too is I wrote this book in the midst of crisis. So many books that are written about when the sky is falling in our life tend to be written at the backside when we can look back and everything's all happy again. I actually wrote this while I was going through things mm. and I intended, it, partly it was therapeutic for me, but the other part was I had hoped at some point other people going through crisis could read this and have a day-to-day -day choice. Believe this, pray this, ponder this, to get them through today. Because sometimes that's all we can do is and, make it through our day. And this is a tool to learn to press on, press in to Christ mm -hmm. and others and to push through. And I'll tell you, January 2012, a month of suddenlies. Yeah. That's a chapter worth reading. Yeah. That's where the light dawns. Yeah, there's an eight month gap between the last two chapters in this book. But the Bible, there's this incredible word in the Bible. It just, it occurs over and over again, suddenly. It's like when things seem at their absolute worst, when hope is lost, when God just loves to be the hero of the story. Mm -hmm. And in my life, in a three week period, suddenly it was over. Mm -hmm. I had a full time job in the ministry again. My wife found a house she absolutely loves that we can move into again. We even found a whole house full of furniture on Craigslist for something we could afford. It's just like suddenly it all came back together and it was over. Eric, I have to leave our, our viewers with this. Elizabeth Elliot, God bless her, uh, mm. had three husbands finally, but Jim Elliot lost in 56. Uh, the Auka story, I'm sure you know. She said, the will of God is never exactly what you expect it to be. It may seem to be much worse, but in the end, it's going to be a lot better and a lot bigger. You will get the big picture and hope to make it through your pain with this dynamic little book right from the fiery furnace of Dr. E. It's at our e-store.
be sure to get your copy. Come on back. We haven't done the Mystics book. Yeah, we need to do that one okay. too. So I love being with you guys. You're such a blessing to me, and I know so many people going through storms like this. Thanks, Eric. Thanks.